Well, hello everyone. Um, we were just uh, playing around with technology, so we apologize for the wait, but hey, you never know. Maybe there are some of you that couldn't join us at the top of the hour, so hopefully you'll be able to join us right now. I am so pleased to tell you that with me for the first time here in studio, at least via Zoom, our dear brother, Rob Christian, and I'm honored uh, to have him join us. I actually, it was an interesting story, I, I, I have to admit. I, I didn't hear his name before, uh, simply because we get preoccupied sometimes with other things and other channels, and we forget that there are so many warriors for the Lord out there, until just a silly incident happened about somebody, you know, uh, trying to pretend that he has a channel like ours, and, uh, and then I came across some videos that he is... Uh, trying to at least attack, and one of it says Rob Christian, and that's when I found out about him. So I'm so thankful that the Lord used that evil actually for good. So brother, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we are honored to have you here. Please let our at least audience know a little bit about you, whatever you feel comfortable sharing with them. I don't think all of them know of who you are, so that this will be an opportunity for you to invite them to uh, also subscribe to your channel. Go ahead, please. Hello. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you, brother Fadi. God bless you. God bless your audience. God bless everybody who's listening. Uh, my name is Rob Christian. Uh, I'm a Christian apologist, uh, debater and teacher. Uh, and I used to teach about Islam and debate Muslims on the infamous Paul Talk panel. So that's yeah a little bit about me. Uh, uh, maybe we can share also and say that I've been doing this for almost 14 years now. Wonderful. And, yeah, and in the last 11 months, let's say almost a year, I started to upload my debates and teachings on YouTube. That's awesome. Uh, and and where, yeah. where is your, this YouTube channel? How can they find it? Uh, you can look for me, uh, uh, just search for Rob Christian or uh, www.youtube.com slash C slash Rob Christian without separation. So uh, you'll Pro find me then. Very good, very good. And by the way, uh, brothers here in the studio, we want to make sure it says live from the studio, Al Fadi and Rob Christian, uh, so that people know uh, that this is the guest that we have with us. So, uh, brother, um, the topic that we've decided to talk about, and by the way, because you are an Arab, you speak Arabic, yes. Uh, I guess that's what makes you dangerous, right, in the field of Islam, because uh, you can really smell it and expose it immediately. We're going to talk about the perfect book. Uh, that's the Quran that uh, is the model, supposedly, for grammar, for Arabic language, and that you are not going to find anything in it in terms of errors, especially linguistically, because the language in it is a heavenly language, right? Is that yes. what we hear all the time? Yes, the thing is, uh, you know, f like I mentioned, for the last 14 years that I'm doing this, I really uh, came to know and f I found out that many, unfortunately, many non-Arabic speaking Muslims are actually uh, victims of this man-made cult. And unfortunately, their imams and shiuch uh, don't dare to mention about the real facts that are kept hidden from them. So basically what we are trying to do is we want to show Muslims the real truth about their, uh, yeah, uh, you can say man-made cult, uh, man-made religion. And hopefully uh, when they find and see the hidden uh, things that are kept from them, Lord willing, they will be open to accept Christianity and accept Amen. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because Amen. he and only he is the truth, the way in life. Amen. Amen. And what we want to talk about here today, uh, the topic has to do with, and I think uh, people can see that uh, uh, on the screen, uh, it is basically something that has to do with the Hafs Quran. Now, what do we mean by Hafs Quran? I'm going to give just a, a quick background here, and my brother here can elaborate. Now, believe it or not, I think me and Jay mentioned this, Jay Smith mentioned this many times, that the Quran that Muslims have, the most popular version of the Quran, and yes, I did say version, believe it or not, there are other versions. The most popular Quran, basically, or Quran that is used is the Hafs Quran, basically, or according to Hafs. And this is the 1924 Cairo edition, which, by the way, was not based on any written manuscript. It was supposedly based on an oral transmission from this particular, uh, you know, reader of the Quran. Oh, his name is Hafs. And that was back in the, uh, technically speaking, at the end of, of the 8th century. 
And somehow his reading is the most popular one. And, and somehow our Muslim friends are convinced that it's been transmitted orally for all of these years. Think about it, for 1300 years. And the claim is that it represents the Uthmanic Crescent or the structure of the letters. And it's also a replica of what was revealed to the Prophet of Islam from heaven. Now that's the claim. Today we're going to show you some samples of errors, linguistic errors, grammatical errors, and so on and so forth. Brother, would you like to add anything to at least to the importance of Hafs uh, when, yeah. when it comes to the yes. Quran? Exactly. Hafs, uh, who is actually Hafs? Hafs is uh, a Muslim who came much later, uh, much later after the death of Muhammad. And if we study about his life uh, and we go through uh, the most authentic sources, we uh, find the shocking uh, facts about Hafs that he is nothing but a uh, thief and a liar. <laughs> Actually, all of his hadith are uh, rejected. So for me, as an apologist, I ask uh, the Muslims that we debate uh, or we talk to on, on YouTube or on Potok, why are you putting your salvation and trust in on a liar, a known liar, and a thief, right? Because he used to borrow books, which he never gave back to their uh, owners, and claimed that he's the one who wrote the books. On top of that, all of his hadith, all about uh, the, the, you can say, the Sunnah of Muhammad, all of them are rejected. Why is that? And why are you putting trust in a liar and a thief like Hafs? Uh, because uh, somebody told him so, probably. A sheikh told him so, or Al-Azhar yeah. told him so, or, or a tr the tradition told him so. I mean, somehow it's baffling to me. And I'm sure you know this, uh, uh, Rob, but uh, there are five at least known traditions of Hafs that uh, they have their own variations and differences. So within Hafs, the Hafs yeah. family of Qurans, there are variations. What does that tell you then about the preservation and the authenticity of the text itself? We can we can say that actually the Muslims played even with the Hafs recitation because we have always uh, challenged Muslim. Can you show us one original, complete Uthmanic manuscript from the seventh century? According to Islamic tradition, uh, Uthman gave the command to Zayd ibn Thabit to collect the Quran and write it in the Qurayshi dialect. Correct. Now, where is that original? Uthmanic manuscript and on top of that who gave Uthman the authority to burn six exactly out of seven ahruf, that's if we believe if we believe there are six or seven I mean this tradition about the seven ahruf was actually canonized later at the time of uh, Ibn Mujahid almost 300 years later so if we believe exactly. even the tradition did exist exactly yeah. And even and, the, the original uh, house they don't have anymore. That's right. Now, somebody, <laughs> somebody is asking a very good question. You know, Akash Hader is asking you, saying, you know, can you elaborate further about who said that house is a liar? Now, I would say, Akash, go and Google it. You'll find this yeah. uh, on, on the web. But do you have well, any uh, yeah, source? Well, at actually, least? Uh, yeah. Imam Bukhari said it. Uh, and Nisa'i said it. Those are at least two uh, from prominent uh, Islamic six scholars. Sita books, right? Yeah. Six Sita authentic uh, narratives. Hadith. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So, so you can go and Google it. I'm sure you will find many who wrote about this. It's not like a, a, a foreign yeah, yeah, knowledge, yeah. by the way. We're not like inventing things right here. Everything we share, it's easy these days for people just to do a simple Google search and you'll find it immediately. So, so brother, let's take a quick journey to show our, uh, our basically audience or viewers in this case, what exactly is going on. And, and by the way, uh, I want to say uh, this, brother. I, I, you know, maybe fail to um, elaborate on this. That yeah, Al Fadi, I if I if I can uh, just add to to the question of the brother who who asked us question about uh, halves, uh I can I can give you a couple of names. Go ahead. Al Bukhari Taraku. That means they rejected his hadith. Waqala Muslims. That is Imam Muslim and Imam Bukhari, which are the yeah. second most trusted sources to go to after the Quran. Right. Both of them, they say his hadith are rejected. That means he is a liar when it comes to hadith. So right. why are this you is the top two sahih, basically hadith. Exactly. Right. So you, you cannot trust him. Yeah. So and what, what I was going to say uh, is this is also part, oh, and I apologize for not mentioning this uh, early on to my viewers because of the technical issues that we face with. This is part of our also 
podcast, the radio show, and it's called Let Us Reason. So as before, if you joined us like today with Sam, we'll take 24 minutes, we'll take a quick one minute break, uh, we'll stay on the air, but we'll take a break and we'll start another radio show for 24 minutes, again, because the podcast requires us to only record 24 minutes. So uh, Brother Rob, you'll be also on radio as well as on the uh, Facebook Live, and later we'll air this as well on YouTube channel. So I'd like to welcome, of course, our audience uh, who are listening to Let Us Reason. With me here uh, uh, via Zoom, actually, in studio, our dear brother Rob Christian, who has his own uh, apologetic uh, ministry uh, to Islam, and his uh, YouTube channel also is called, uh, it's called Rob Christian, if I remember correct. Yes, Rob Christian. Uh, basically, if you go to YouTube and you look for Rob Christian, you'll see me uh, with the letter N, the noon, the N. Right, which is uh, 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 for Nasara. Yeah. 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 Uh, very good. So I am going to show uh, our viewers right now at least a slide about one of the many words that are mentioned in the Quran that you will notice immediately. The word is written one way in one verse and another way in another verse, when in fact it's still the same word, technically speaking. For instance, the name of Abraham, and people will see that right now, in, in one of the verses in the Quran, it is written as Abram or Abraham without the alif or the extension, the extended alif basically, and another one, uh, or yeah in this case, uh, I should say, without, it's not saying it Ibrahim, uh, I meant, you know, to say without the yeah, but it sound like uh, the Hebrew way of saying it before his name was changed, and it is Abraham, like this. And the yeah. second time, it's actually with the yeah, the way the Quran pronounced it, Ibrahim. So go ahead and elaborate on this, brother. Yeah, as you see uh, on the screen, uh, it says in chapter Al-Baqarah, if you go to chapter Al-Baqarah. Surah uh, chapter 2, yeah. Yeah, chapter 2, that's chapter 2 indeed. Uh, in the whole uh, chapter, you can find the name uh, Abram, basically, Abram. Right. So without, an, uh, let's say, an E or a Ya. Without the uh, Ya, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the whole chapter contains, as you see above, without an E, let's say. But in the rest of the 113 chapters, the name is completely changed. So we should ask Allah, which which is the correct way to write the name Abraham? Is it without an E or is it within, with an E as mentioned in chapter Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah? Right, right. And Muslims will say, well, they are both correct. No, they are, cannot be both correct because we're talking about a God. Can God make such huge mistakes? We are talking about a complete God that you claim that he is a complete God, all-knowing, so both names cannot be correct. This is a name, right? Right. And the idea, of course, uh, our Muslim friends going to come back and say, wait a minute, I mean, the Quran was revealed orally. No, no, no. It says it is written in the preserved tablets in heaven. So which exactly. way it's written? Which way it was written? You tell exactly. me. The way with the exactly. Yah or with the, the way without the Yah? And don't tell me Abraham and Ibrahim are one and the same. No, that's not the case because no, uh, I didn't grow up basically as a Muslim believing that his name was Abraham. It was the Bible that told me his name was Abraham and became Abraham. That's what yeah. the Bible teaches and there is a reason behind that change. But here, there is no logical reason why the name appears in two different ways. Anything else you'd like to add to this particular incident before we jump into another example? Yeah, Al-Fadi, we can actually conclude uh, that these are traces of human intervention, right? Exactly. They, they actually started to play with the words. Exactly. And it's a perfect cluster proof that they actually started to play and add things that are not there. Yeah, and I would argue, brother, I would argue, I mean, I cannot really confirm it yet, this is just a theory right now, that some of these uh, actually uh, things that they were hearing had to do with how Muhammad probably or his followers when they went to Medina supposedly and they were interacting with the Jews and the Jewish tribe, they were hearing things about Abraham or Abraham and they probably assumed it was this way and then later on they realized the name changed and they began to wrestle with those kind of things. Maybe we can show another example, Brother Al-Fadi? Absolutely. So I'm going to go to the next example, and this one is kind of interesting. It's found in chapter 20 of the Quran, verse 94, chapter 20, verse 94. And uh, basically, you find the word actually written as, I'm going to say, O son of my mother, that's the English translation, but the Arabic is, Yabna'um, you can see the one at the top, 
which is Ya Ibn Um, the one at the bottom. In fact, you'll find those two different ways uh, being written for the same verse. And when you go to the commentaries, the Islamic commentaries, believe it or not, they all write it the way at the bottom. Or at least yes. I don't want to say all. Most of them right at the way at the bottom. They're trying to explain to you why I was said this. And I found, you know, it's kind of interesting, by the way. Uh, I'll, I'll let you first elaborate and I'm going to share my findings yes. about the explanation. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, uh, as you see, uh, I mean, you don't need to know Arabic to see the differences. There are separation if you compare them with one another. It's actually the same word, but one is uh, written uh, separately and the alif is added. You see? The long things that are going on to to the top, basically, those are the elephs, the a, yeah, right. abna ummi. Yeah, here but is if here you, is the yeah. Uh, give, yeah. So uh, the 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 beneath one, the under one, that that's the correct one to to write it in the modern way, right? Exactly. But if you ask a um, let's say a college student or a university student, an Arabic speaker. Who goes to university and you ask him to read the above word uh he, he cannot read it they can't and really even, he cannot read it if you dictate it to them if you dictate it to them say i want you to write yabna om this is how they're yeah. going to write it the way at the bottom they're not going to write it exactly. the way at the top exactly exactly so the the above one they cannot read it and we're talking about a college student this is not a guy who just or a kid who recently went to school so right you have to give them the beneath one to correctly read it and uh, what is more damaging brother al fadi you see this is both from chapter 20 i and 94 but why can we find two different uh, spellings for the same word because if you go let's say to quran.com quran.com that's basically the number one uh, website for the quran uh, that we can go to it's written like the above one but if you go to quranwow.com you will see that it's written like the one that you highlighted, the yeah. beneath and, one. And here is the explanation. So that they are playing. They are correcting the words of Exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you go and read the commentaries, especially earlier Islamic commentaries, this is what they say. Uh, some uh, Somebody ask a mufti, okay, a guy who can really issue a fatwa or a declaration or at least explanation. says, why is it written sometimes this way and other times this way? His explanation was, well, this happened when, uh, I'll give you the background, Moses went to up the top of the mountain, received the Ten Commandments and the two tablets. He went down and he saw that Aaron, he entrusted the Israelites to Aaron. They were worshiping the golden calf. So he threw the two Ten Commandment tablets. They, he broke him and he grabbed his brother from what his beard now they're saying when he grabbed him in his beard it's almost like when these letters at the top are conjoined it's representing that he was like really touching his brother and he's connected to him but the others who are saying the bottom uh, way of saying it is the right one as well and why is it separated the letters he said well because they, he wasn't really yet touching him as closely as he was according to the one at the top. In other words, there's two ways to explain it. When he was, if if he was really grabbing his brother from the beard closer to him, then you write it according to the way at the top. But if he was just trying to grab his brother, then you write it at the way at the bottom. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense to anybody, to any logical person who can think about it? Since when's grammar has to do anything with emotions and anger anyway? No, that's, that's an excuse, uh, Brother Al-Fadi, because we have asked Shuyukh uh, Al-Azhar, that's basically the number one university when it comes to Islam, that's in uh, Cairo, Egypt. We asked them, why are you not trying to fix these disasters that we can find in the Quran of Hafs? We are talking about Hafs, we are not talking about other recitations. This is the number one used recitation in the world, uh, let's say in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and so on and so on. But um, we asked them, why are you not fixing it? And you know what the answer is, Brother Fadi, I kid you not. Their answer is, are you going to ask us to fix something that has never been fixed by any sheikh or scholar? They don't dare to play and fix the Quran. Right, so, right. <laughs> what are you trying to ask from us? Exactly. I know about this, but you know. Now we have uh, we have someone here, uh, the same person, Akash Haider. Akash, I really hope that you're learning uh, here. You're not here just to ask questions only. Uh, the question is, does word Aleph, by the way, Aleph is not a word. It's a letter, okay? It's a letter. Okay, so it's not a word, it's a letter. 
And Aleph is the one that is like extended, you know, like a vertical letter. I hope you know that. You have an Arabic name. And uh, yeah, the question he's basically is... Asking, he's basically asking, does the letter A matter? Exactly. Does it matter? <laughs> of course it does matter. It makes a huge difference. That's why it matters. I'll tell you why it matters. When Abraham versus Abraham... For instance, I'm going to use the biblical way that it matters a big deal. One meant like standing or elevated. The other one meant he's the father of all nations. So it does matter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm just so, using so it's basically and it, asking, does the letter A matter in the English language? <laughs> of course. And also in Arabic. <laughs> do you know, by the way, my friend Hader here, I'm going to tell you that you go to later Quranic, still within the early Quranic manuscript family, you'll go to one who are later, like around 8th, 9th century and even 10th century, you'll notice that many of them went back and corrected the missing alif. It's called the defective alif and they added the daggers or added al other alifs to accommodate for those missing alifs. So it does matter. Why would they do this if it doesn't matter? Because it matters in the way you pronounce something and how it might mean for certain words as well. So brother, let's go to another example. This one is found in the same chapter, chapter 20, verse 95 this uh, this time. And it's Ya Samiri, Ya Samiriyu, okay? Uh, talking about the, Sam uh, the Samaritans. Uh, by the way, yes. The story of Moses says the Samaritans existed at the time of the Exodus. I don't think so, okay? I mean, no, we're not going to no, go there didn't. anyway. So here, that's, that's yeah. a, another disaster for another time, maybe. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the, the Samaritans existed after 721 due to the intermarriages between the Assyrians and the remnant Jews in the Northern Kingdom. But we'll talk about that at a later time. Nevertheless, so the same word as people can see, I'm going to... I'm going to, by the way, I have the ability to highlight words for people here. Yes. Look at the word at the top. It's exactly the same as the one in the bottom. You don't speak yes. Arabic. Look at it. Does it look the same to you? No. I'm talking to and the people uh, who do not yeah, speak maybe Arabic. You can highlight the part, uh, Brother Fadi. You, you will see that they are trying here yeah. uh, to fix it with a baby elif. That, that that's small right. thing, that's not even a letter. That's the dagger elif right here. Yeah. And so the, basically, you can read it as simari. And, uh, well, I tell you, yes, Samiri. Marie. Samiri. Yes, Samiri. yeah, yes, Marie, or yes, Marie. it can mean something. I mean, sometimes people hear the word yes, Marie, by the way, they think you're, you're partying, okay? Or, yeah. or yes, Marie, that mean you who have like darker skin. That's what yeah. it means sometimes, okay? Maybe that's what yeah. it meant initially. Yeah, because uh, we need to think here. We believe if we do some digging and do some research, we will understand and we will see. Uh, that uh, actually the real Quran was not even in Arabic because you will find many traces that it's actually in the Aramaic language. But maybe that's a topic for another time. But as you see, as Brother uh, Al-Fadi mentioned, the Alif, you know, the whole word changed. The meaning ch can change. Exactly. And again, if you're tuning in from Let Us Reason, thank you so much for doing so. Obviously, for those of you who do not know, I have a radio show called Let Us Reason, a Christian Muslim dialogue with Al Fadi. And I'm so uh, honored to have my dear brother Rob Christian with me here today. And hopefully, we'll have him more, not just on the podcast, but also uh, uh, in the studio through Zoom or Skype or whatever means available out there, because we want to. Uh, basically uh, bless our brother here by giving him uh, as wide as possible platforms, not just his own, but other platforms. And hopefully others will invite him as well because we want to work together. We want to help each other Amen, and we brother. want to Amen. broaden the reach. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about him. Yeah. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want our Muslim friends to have their eyes open and their soul saved from eternal damnation. We want you to be in paradise today our lord Amen. said that you will be with me in paradise our lord jesus says he is the way the truth he said i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father where is the father the father is in heaven no one comes to the father except by me and that's really important for us to know these things so thank you again, brother, for being here. Thank you for those who are tuning in to Let Us Reason. And we have a few more minutes left, brother. So maybe one more minute, we'll go to another example. And then yes. from there, uh, we will end up basically uh, uh, taking a break and coming to another uh, session of Set us, uh, Let Us Reason. So the word uh, that is found in chapter 51 of the Quran, verse 39, Sahir, 
And yes. the word, the same word found in the same chapter, 51 verse 52. People can see it on the screen right now. And this is indeed a real disaster, actually. And I'll tell yeah. you why. Take all of these diacritical markings right here. Those are diacritical markings. We're going to take them all out from the word at the top. You know what yes. the word become? Sahar. Sahar. Sahar, yeah. meaning magic word, you know, or uh, Sahar, that's the name of a person. Uh, now look how they fixed it at the bottom. Sahir, meaning someone who is performing, basically, uh, is a magician, I should say. Yeah, Versus a magician or a wizard, yes. So yeah. we, have, we have a huge problem here. And uh, the thing is, uh, if we ask a Muslim who is trying to do all kind of gymnasting and tap dancing around the issue here, they will say, but look, uh, you know, you have the vowels. But wait a second, my friend. Can you show me an one complete Uthmanic manuscript that contains vowels, let alone dots? Yeah, yeah that's, a, so that's a million dollar question, brother. We've been asking it for, for yeah, a while now. Yeah, so it's, it's a totally different word, totally different meaning, right? And the Aleph, you see how important the A or actually the Aleph is in the middle? Uh, even a non-Arabic speaker can see the difference in the words. Forget about the vowels that uh, Amen. Amen. brother uh, Al-Fadi wiped out with his blue pen. It's... It should be uh, the same, the one and the same word. I mean, Allah, you claim that you are God in the Quran. Can God, Muslims who are listening, can God, who claims to be God in the Quran, can Allah make such disasters happen in the Quran? This is a complete eternal being that we're talking about. That's right. Should we ask Allah to go back to school and learn and to spell Arabic? Uh, yeah, right. And here's the difference, by the way. The one at the top is, you can say, this is without the uh, data critical marks or the dagger alif, it's describing the action, sihr. The one at the bottom is talking about the one who is doing the action, sahir. Exactly. You see the big difference here? It can make a difference also in the theology of the verse. We have to look at it and the context of the verse and the meaning behind it. And there's many examples like this where the theology is questionable and you wonder who decided that the theology should be right this way or that way because of changing the positions of the diacritical markings or adding dagger alif or many other clarifications. Well, brother, we're approaching the end of our first segment on Let Us Reason. And again, I want to remind people to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sira International. and. We we encourage you to become a Patreon patron as well and give as much as the Lord put in your heart, but as little as $1. I mean, we are so thankful for your heart, your generous gift. Even a $1 is extremely generous simply because we can benefit from that to stay on the air and produce these videos. And at the same time, I want to encourage you to go to my brother's YouTube channel, Rob Christian, and do the same. We're not here to make millions of dollars. We're not here to become rich. If we are, we won't be doing what we're doing, actually. We will be probably vacationing somewhere. No, we're here to serve the Lord, to reach our Muslim people, to equip the saints, and we are so thankful for the technology that allows us to do this. Brother, uh, last words for you before we close. Yeah, as you see, guys, uh, how important it is to have two Arabic-speaking Christians to show you the secrets that are kept hidden from the non-Arabic-speaking, in this case, the Muslims we call the victims uh, of this Arabic uh, man-made or created cult. It's really important to have two brothers like us. One can confirm the other about these disasters that we can find in the Quran. And if you Muslims claim that Allah is the true God, God cannot make such mistakes. You cannot have a cake and eat it to call yourself God in the, of the Quran while you have many words. These are just simple, couple of simple words, but there are dozens and dozens and dozens like these disasters to be found in the Quran. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Al-Fadi. Amen. And maybe we can continue. Yes, uh, we, we will come back. We will come back segment two. And uh, again, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to Let Us Reason. And next week, we will continue, of course, with an another segment. Thank you for watching. Please like our video. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed 
and it will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.